Now we want to talk about single sign-on. And you know, just as a sort of a established base here, what is single sign-on? Well, it's basically a way of allowing someone into a system without them actually having to continually re-enter their username and password each time they go to a different system. You want one place that sort of centrally authenticates them and every other system from that point on will let them in based on that single authentication. So they sign on one time, they can go to, to multiple places. So from a SSO setup strategy, we're not going to get too deep into the actual configuration of SSO. Uh, we're going to sort of touch on it a little bit here, but it's worth pointing out that when you're, when you're looking to set up SSO, especially with a third party, non-Oracle, non-Microsoft system, uh, th those are very straightforward setups, those two environments, because it's, it's, it's essentially one thing that you have to do, and as long as you get that one thing right, everything's going to work. With a third party, it's a little bit more complicated. So you want to start off by making sure that your, your core OBIE SSO functionality is in place and it's working, because if, if you try to jump to the, the testing of the entire system right away, there, there could be a lot of places where things can go wrong and you won't know where those things are. Uh, so it's best to start off with just the core functionality in an OBIE related to SSO. Use a, a just a sample web page, something, that, you know, a quick web page that you write up, has nothing to do with your portal or your, your system that you're trying to integrate SSO with. Just use a simple web page to get the basic SSO functionality of OBIE working. Then try to bring in your third party tool um, and, and custom web application to, to the picture because if, if you try to bring this in further in here and things are going wrong, you won't know is it is it that I have OBIE set up wrong or is it that I have my integration set up wrong. It, it, it's better to get OBIE working first, make sure you got all those variables and setups in place, then try to bring in your third party tool to so configuration steps, it's pretty straightforward. Um, you need in the, in the metadata repository, OBIE uses something called, it, called an impersonator user. And it's this user that sort of is the representative for all users in the system. So when your, your third party tool passes off to OBIE, it's passing it off to this impersonator user. And then this impersonator user figures out who it needs to be um, from the credentials that it's passed. So this uh, impersonator user needs to be in the repository. Um, and then there's uh, a file at the server level called the credential store, which holds all these uh, encrypted passwords. And so all that information about the impersonator user needs to be entered in the credential store using a, a utility of the server called Crypto Tools. Uh, again, I'm kind of keeping this at a high level because I don't want to get too geeky and config here. But um, you know, this is a, an important step that you need to do. From there, um, we need to make sure, and, and this is likely to be already set up in your OBI environment, especially if you're using delivers. I don't like Michael, Michael, are you using delivers? So this step would already have been done for you because the same credential store holds information about how the scheduler connects to the, the presentation MBI server as well. So you just need to make sure if you haven't done this, that the, the presentation server knows where this credential store is. And then from there, um, in the instance config file, which is the main configuration file for the presentation server, you have some code that you have to enter in to basically turn on SSO. And not to get too into this code, but basically you're, through this code, you're basically saying that SSO is turned on. And at that point, when you go to the URL for OBIEE, you will no longer get the login page. You will no longer get the page where you enter in your username and password because it's assuming at that point that something is passing credentials to it. Make sense?